We use words to describe concepts, concepts we try to understand. So we invent the word wet to describe what water is. We have these words, philosophy, uh, it's just imperfect. It's a label, and it's like most of our labels, it, it just doesn't do the job. I don't see any point in wasting time trying to figure out what makes somebody an official philosopher. There is only one truth. The only real philosopher is the guy who's got that right answer. Finding the right answers, that's the science of philosophy. But in our culture, I guess I would say a philosopher is anybody who writes well sometimes is a philosopher because they gain popularity or they write sympathetically to popular sensibilities. I mean, great musicians are people who write music that people like. That's the standard. And maybe it's not the right standard, but that's the standard. You know, power creates power. You know, when it feeds itself. It's self-maintaining. In your universe, in your, your just universe, well, what's inheritance? What is that, earn? Is inheritance justice? It's idiotic. We're not going to let you inherit your, your status in this world. And we're going to play this dog-eat-dog -dog world. At least all the dogs should start from the same place. We shouldn't give some dogs, you know, put them, hey, let's put some dogs three feet from the finish line. Let's put some dogs up in the grandstand with the trophy already. All these fancy words and all this, this, this psychological speak, all this terminology, all these stupid, these stupid words, words, another human invention. It's all created for what? This is the perfect example of what's wrong with philosophy, what's wrong with atheists. They, they've decided it's an excuse to be selfish pricks. And there's nothing objective in that kind of thinking. Objectivity leads you to one conclusion if you're an atheist. If you're an atheist and objective, you draw one conclusion. Oh yeah, that we came from nature. We came from these crude forces where, where nature doesn't care how much suffering it causes. It doesn't care how miserable something's death is. It has no ethics, no sensibilities, no intellectual appreciation, okay? It doesn't matter how big a maggot you are, or how big a piece of scum you are, success, that all of a sudden that's the victory, you deserve the crown, you deserve the praise. Well, that's bullshit. Justice is a, is, implies, imposes a whole different standard. You can't, you can't, it's crazy. You cannot put these words together. You cannot mix them, okay? Because one word is completely the opposite of the other. Using physics, you know, physics and the laws of probability to defend contrived fairy tale esque, you know, uh, descriptions of creation. I mean, this is just so ludicrous. I mean, so your premise is that uh, you know uh, somehow nature can't um, account for um, eternity. No, we can't account for it. We we can't. Okay. Not nature. Nature doesn't have any problem with it, I'm sure. You say the universe what, what, doesn't have any beginning or end, you know, that nature can account for. Well, what if it doesn't begin or end? What about atheism demands a beginning to the universe? I mean, I could speculate. Obviously, I can't go there scientifically. I can't take a spaceship or I can't play a videotape and know what happened the day before the Big Bang. Obviously, because there's no physical forces existing at that moment. Well, none that we know of. But obviously there could be forces. I would speculate that before the Big Bang, when mass, when all matter is consolidated and frozen, essentially, as hard as we understand it, uh, then time is frozen also. And what causes it to thaw? Well, maybe, maybe it's a different kind of time, a different kind that you measure in a different way based on physical uh, aging or, or maturation of some you know, atomic particle. I don't. I, I have no explanation for that. I have no. I have no way to to explain uh, that physics. But I might require to. I might mean, speculate that it's an oscillating universe, an oscillating process, just like the four zillion other examples in nature of things oscillating. Why can't it oscillate? Why can't the universe itself oscillate? Yes, it contracts, it expands, it contracts, it expands, it contracts, it expands. This is over and over and over and over and over, forever, ever, ever, ever. But you say, because I, I can't uh, uh, give you this perfect description of the physics, that therefore we, the universe must have a spontaneous source, must have a spontaneous instigator, and that infinite intelligence must have poofed out of nowhere, no creator, nothing. No, it just poofed. It just, all of a sudden, 
they sat around forever and ever, God, and then one day God said, oh yeah, I'll create a universe today, or I'll kick the ball, I'll, and then create the Big Bang, I'll do the first little poke and initiate the energy that just caused the whole thing to spiral forever and ever and ever, it's just crazy, uh, but we do live in a predictable mechanical universe. I mean, it's, it's like, okay, take a pool table and remove all the friction, and then you see what happens. You move one ball, and then it just goes forever and ever, bounces all over the place, no friction, blah, blah, blah. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. That physical law exists. That's a good one, okay? <laughs> that seems pretty dang reliable. And uh, so, yeah, the universe always existed. We don't have to explain it to be an atheist. We can see evolution. It exists. I mean, to deny its existence is just preposterous. And we can see what we came from. We are, uh, what, it was God's plan that for two million years, human beings would have an intellect, a mind that worked, and they wouldn't use it for two million years, screwing around, acting retarded, even though they had the mental capacity to write Shakespeare if they just had a culture and some education. I mean, that's preposterous. What stupid ass God would do that? The human man have to sit there and eat bugs. I mean, it's just idiotic. The whole premise is just idiotic. You people just want a fairy tale. You want a happy ending. You want us to be able to say, and they lived happily ever after. He's all afraid of the end. They're all afraid of the conclusion. Snow White married the prince, died in childbirth, and uh, Prince Charming got hit by a drunk driver driving uh, their first child home from the, the hospital. That's the reality. The reality is real life fucks everybody. All right, and there is no fantasy God to come save us all and to where we go, we live eternities and all this other bullshit. I mean, it's just amazing that you use this thin, weak uh, gaps in our understanding of the physical detail of the universe to excuse preposterous fantasy, preposterous storytelling. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. How can you have the intellect to use words like intellect and words like physics and understand any part of physics and 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 leap to the conclusions you lead to. It's just it's so insulting to your intelligence. You're insulting your own intelligence by, by resorting to such you know weak arguments. It's about the truth. It's the friggin' truth is what we're looking for here. That's what we're arguing about is what is the truth. You know, it's kind of depressing, but the the, the truth is the truth, whether we like it or we don't like it. I mean, I hate to even suggest that you should do anything but try to be happy. You know, because maybe there's no point in trying to be honest with yourself, acknowledging all of life's imperfections and dealing with them. I mean, sort of that's what the religious people do. That's, that's, they're just in a big dishonesty trip and let's find whatever some placating bullshit, you know, to, to make us, you know, make them feel better about the world they live in and make it make sense, and make it more comforting. And we all do that, I mean, in little ways, but to do it in big ways, it might work as a happiness strategy. You know, sometimes you will stifle yourself and, and, and miss opportunities because you allow the truth to get in your way. But is there something more important than the truth? really does get complicated. I'm satisfied with, with who I am. And that's kind of the best feeling there is. I mean, it's not a party, it's not great sex. It's, it's just this, it's comforting to know that you've tried to be as honest as you can with yourself, you've looked at your own bullshit, and you know, the, the nonsense you get caught up in, and you, you know, you, you've tried to live this honorable, decent life, and you're trying to do the best you can, and all this, and, and you, to be able to just be satisfied with the fact that, yeah, okay, I like who I am. I don't like what I've become. You know, I don't like what I am to the world, but I like who I am to me, you know, inside. I mean, the person inside doesn't, I don't hate myself, or dislike myself, or feel, dependent on that juvenile notion of perfection or, or accomplishment.